Welcome to the Wimbo Worldwide F1 Podcast. F1 content around the globe. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Worldwide Wimbo F1 Podcast, episode five. And today I have with me two lovely girls, one's from France, the other one from England, and they are content creators. They are the unbiased F1 fan. They have pages on uh, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. They make these lovely short videos, and they're getting really, really popular. 5,000, 6,000 uh, subscribers on Instagram, and I found them there. I reached out, and they said yes to doing a podcast. Um, yeah, that's all I know about them from now um one's called manon the french girl's called manon and uh, the other one's called maya yeah okay <laughs> i'll leave it up to you welcome hello. hello thank you so much for having us we're really pleased to be here um do you want to should we give more of an intro yeah yeah okay so i'm a scientist um, so I'm really interested in like aerodynamics and how the cars work and things like that. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's probably quite annoying to watch F1 with me because I'm like sat there with the data and like trying to figure out what's going on. Um, so not annoying, but, no, um, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, um, that's kind of like my side of what I'm interested in. And, uh, and I'm a video um, editor and I, I just, I'm really passionate about it like obviously I, I turned my passion into my job but I really love it so I sort of like took it outside of my work hours to just make like little edits of interviews races like I I was really inspired by Drive to Survive because I think like you can you can say what you want about the narrative of the show it looks amazing like the how dramatic they make it it really inspired me and I started my career editing cars videos for Nissan and so I sort of like, it reminded me watching F1, how much I love editing car videos. So I sort of fell back into it. And that's sort of how we started making content, really, with me just having fun and decided to post a few edits. And, they, you know, they, they got traction and we thought, oh, we should show going. our faces and <laughs> took yeah. a while. <laughs> yeah. No, I think they're always really, really funny. And uh, yeah, if if I find one, I, I sometimes watch them two or three times, which is good because uh, <laughs> yeah. it will get spread more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're from England and yeah. you're from France. Now, because I do my worldwide podcast with people from all over the globe, uh, this one is themed France. Yes. Uh, so what part of France are you from? So I'm from the west suburbs of Paris. So uh, if there's any football fans listening where the, the players of the PSG train is really close to my hometown. Uh, for the non-football fans, it's sort of near Versailles. So okay. yeah, it's and it's like a zone five equivalent. If you live in a big city, that will speak to you. But yeah, just suburbs are really accessible. Uh, from Paris, so I, I sort of count myself a Parisian-ish. But she's more friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the outside of the... Well, the... I have good memories about Paris because I took my wife there. She was still my girlfriend then. Did you propose? I proposed, yes. Wow. <laughs> I love it. In a tiny little restaurant in the um, Montmartre area. And, um, I love it. Yeah, it's I fun. was sitting next to a couple from uh, Sheffield and another couple from uh, London. <laughs> Those Brits are everywhere. They shouldn't have built it. <laughs> uh, one of the fellas went, Hi, did, did you just propose to her? <laughs> oh, oh, <my> <laughs> I hope she said yes. I'm sure she did. Yes. In Paris. <laughs> a proposal in Paris. Oh, the dream. If you're not from there. It's so cliche. It it is, but for, that, that for means good reasons. Good. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. good reason. It's beautiful, it, and like, I guess when you're taken to Paris on a romantic trip, you expect to be romanced. So it worked. It worked. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, you're married. And, um, <laughs> do you think the two French drivers are any good? Um, hmm. I like Gasly better than Ocon. 
Like as, okay, as, as a driver, as a person. Yeah. Um, both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know how I feel about Pierre as a person. I think it's. Uh, <laughs> I think it's really interesting to have them on the same team. I think it, mm. it gives us the opportunity to really compare them in a in equal machinery because they've had two sort of really different career trajectories and at the same time not because they both started like did their thing. Then they sort of lost it. Like Pierre got demoted from Red Bull. Esteban was off the grid for a year. So they sort mm. of yeah. they have that up and down sort of like trajectory. And now it sort of feels like they went home, like, you know, they're both in the French team. So I think it's quite interesting, but they're really hard to compare in terms of driving ability because they've driven really different cars. And um, yeah, and yeah, I don't I don't really count Red Bull for Pierre. So he's only been in one car for the most part. So um, yeah, I, I'm always excited to see how Alpine's going to do this. But like this season, I'm like, oh, I want to see them. Challenge. Yeah, I want to see them do something. I feel like they've been yeah, I, even so far, yeah. which is you know interesting. I, I I think one of the benefits they have is that Alpine, the whole package isn't great. Yeah. So the expectations are low. Yeah. And uh, you know, in in a uh, two three races, uh, the, the Alpine might get an upgrade that might get that car going on a track that suits them, and then all of a sudden, uh, one of them scores a P four. And um, they'll be the hero. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely. And, like the expectations are just not there. So, but whereas, yeah, whereas, um, mm. you know how how Gasly did uh, at Alpha Tauri, um, that that was really good because that that car, especially in 2021, was really good. So that's yeah. why he he kept uh, driving himself into the top five. Yeah, I think he had a really good uh, 2021 season because he was always sort of fighting with Ferrari and McLaren, which were themselves fighting for P3. So for yeah. that little guy from Alfa Tauri to always be in that sandwich, that was really good. Uh, it's a shame that last year was quite poor for Alfa Tauri, but, um, but yeah, I think yeah. it's it's good for him to have a, you know, a new opportunity in a new car. And, um, and as people, I think that both... I don't know. I guess I, I have like a bit of effect for them because they're French. Yeah. <laughs> no, and like um, in Drive to Survive, we saw that um, Ocon's parents sold their house and started living in um in a trailer just to, to pay yeah. for the whole yeah. racing career. So yeah. in yeah. that sense, I'm I'm happy that it worked out because he's yeah. he's making enough money now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to pay them back. Yeah, it's such like a big you know, sacrifice to make because you don't know if it's going to work. Yeah, out, so many so. people don't make it. Yeah. So. No, there's only yeah. 20 seats. You never yeah. hear about the ones who, you know, saw the houses and didn't actually make it. We don't talk about no. that. Yeah. So the two of you are partners in content creating, but you're also partners in real life. Yeah. Yes. Which now it's easier. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's easy because we live together. <laughs> <laughs> now um you know the, the, in in the past while um, um drivers have been wearing special helmets like Sebastian Vettel and uh Lewis Hamilton uh, do you appreciate that sort of gestures from uh, from drivers especially in countries where um they're not so open Yeah I think so sometimes like to some extent definitely not I feel like it's a little bit what's the word I can't think of the word. What do you want to say? Like performative. Oh, you're right. a British. Sorry. Right? Um, so like, I feel like um, Lewis and Seb had like amazing intentions. And I think they were amazing at speaking out about things, especially when it was quite dangerous. I think it's quite a dangerous world to talk about those things in. And the FIA has made it clear that you shouldn't be talking about these things. And I think there's a, I read an article where Lewis has to get his like rainbow helmets approved several months in advance and it's like that's insane it's just a rainbow like it doesn't it's not it shouldn't yeah. be a statement anymore it's 2023 um but yeah i think it's nice to see and i wish there were more drivers that were brave enough to do that but i don't feel like there are <laughs> so i just i found it interesting that they made it their battles because mm -hmm. from what we know it doesn't concern them so i'm i'm grateful that they're like you know, aware of it and sort of 
protesting it in their own way because yeah. they can't not race in those countries. There's nothing they can do because they're not in charge. But I guess they raise awareness because maybe some people who don't really care about uh, foreign policies or in politics have no idea that how hard it is for like queer people in those specific countries. Then suddenly they're like, oh, he's wearing his rainbow helmets in those specific countries. I mm. wonder why. And so it raises awareness and it's a good thing. And uh, on the other side of the conversation, I think I I think the, the interviews that Seb gave last year when he, he was on the cover of a really uh, popular gay magazine in England, I, I thought maybe it's not his place as a straight man, but no one else is doing it. So I'm grateful that he's doing it because it's, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of F1 fans have never heard of that magazine before either. So it's always mm -hmm. about raising awareness, uh, starting conversations. And um, yeah, I think I think it's good. And I love that um, during Pride Month last year, at the same time, I saw Martin also gave a voice to um, uh, Jessica, I think, the, um, who was reserve driver at Aston Martin, because, you know, obviously it's only men in F1, but there's so many of the women series drivers or like a, a lot of female drivers identify as like gay by like queer. So it's also mm -hmm. good for them to have a voice because I think in sport, it's sort of easier for women to be out than men. Uh, so it's all part of the same wide conversation about like queer people in sport. Yeah. Well, I, I what I liked about the yeah the helmets is that uh, that it's something uh, personal and that's something they choose for themselves. Yeah. You know, to, to to wear a rainbow on the helmet. I wasn't particularly fussed on the on the kneeling and um, you know the 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 the, the BLM t-shirts uh, uh, the the racism t-shirts um, and not because I'm um, uh, not not. Uh, uh, because I'm against racism, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, it's but not so much um, fake, what happened in those days was um, th there was such focus on who uh, who knelt and who didn't, mm. and um, you yeah. know, uh, Lewis came out with like, uh, yeah, I talked to Max, but he didn't do it, so it didn't have any point, and yeah. that sort of. So I think it's yeah. interesting whether now more drivers would have kneeled because I feel like really understood it and I feel like while everything in BLM was happening everything was so particularly because it was a pandemic everything was so dramatic and like sudden and rushed and everything and I feel like someone like Max has probably like listened and learned a lot more since then and everything was like, it felt really rushed. Whereas with the LGBT stuff, like everybody knows that queer well, rights are bad, I, are bad in Saudi Arabia. I, I get your point though, that yeah. like any driver could have yeah. any statement on their helmet. I mean, not that it could because the FIA have got rules. Like Seb has uh, gay flags on his helmet or he has a message about global warming. Like mm -hmm. it's it's what he feels. And the other yeah, driver is personal having it. Yeah. The other drivers not having a gay flag doesn't mean they're homophobes, not at all, no. it's just their battle. Mm. I think with BLM and with that shirt that they were all wearing, it became a thing of, oh, if you're not wearing the shirt, then it means you're against it. Or if you're not kneeling, then it means you're against it, even though ultimately this is not the time and place necessarily to have those conversations. So if a driver is like, I'm educating myself, I'm interested in this, I'm protesting in my own ways, I just don't want to do it now. It doesn't mean they're against it. So yeah, I get your yeah. point. Um, yeah. It's not the scrutiny of like, oh, if you don't kneel, you're racist. It's like, no, it's it's more complicated well, than that. I, I've started looking at the LGBTQ um, community differently since uh, my, um, my eldest child uh, came out two and a half years ago as, um, as trans, so. Um, yeah. I have, um, can you see it, Anne-Marie on my arm, <laughs> tattoos, but six, seven years ago. And um, yeah, I think I have to cover it up because his name is Declan uh, now. <laughs> so, yeah, what do you do with the tattoo? That's it true. Really changes the name. Yeah, that's really I don't know, you yeah, can well, turn it into something funny like you and Declan can have, you know, the chat well, about it. The first it's thing I did was use it as a lesson to say, think about what you put 
as a tattoo, but <laughs> you can't take it off. Yeah. You know, it, <laughs> like you might like dolphins when you're 18, but mm-hmm. <laughs> by the time you're 30, you might think it's stupid. <laughs> so, how old um, is he? Uh, Declan's six, 16 now. Okay. And um, yeah, yeah, he he came out with that uh, when he was 13, and um, we, we did the uh, obvious um, um, cliche thing that all parents do um, when a son uh, comes out, when a child comes out, and it's like, it's just a phase. Yeah. Yes. So he was 13 then, and uh, he said, well, you know, you do your thing, you know, call yourself whatever you like, but by the time you're 14, it will probably be uh, something else. But it stayed that way. And um, yeah, he, he, he has a, a really large group of friends that come in, and um, uh, it's very hard for me to use uh, the right pronouns all the time because uh, it's one of those mixed groups, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. But they don't mind because, uh, yeah, they they know I'm old, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm not like that you even I'm not with the times. Yeah, it's about Sorry? Like, we mess up sometimes. It's so important to just show that you're willing to try. Like, you yeah, mess up. You will. It's like you know if we don't have like some people keep calling Maya Maria, right? It's and so annoying. They, they just keep forgetting. <laughs> it. It's the way her name is spelled, or should be with a Y is with an I it's it's the same as your brain automatically thinks oh it's Maria and you have to keep reminding yourself that it's not it's the same when you want to she someone instead of they They them or (laughs) it's the same thing it's your brain has automatic automations that you have to like you know erase but yeah I think as long as you're trying and not doing it with I think the most important thing is that uh, that's a happy bunch of friends and they're all into k-pop uh, and they and they go to uh, the the big cities in uh, in the Netherlands and uh, they do these uh, dance off things. Yeah, that's cool. And they're having a great time. So um, yeah, that's that's the main thing. Yeah. But um, we're having a great time um, in Formula One. Oh. Are you guys <laughs> really, really, really unbiased, or do you have favorites? We think that unbiased is a state of mind. And <laughs> um, what I think is that unbiased doesn't have to mean neutral. Yeah. I think you can have a favorite and still be unbiased when you analyze situations, when, when you analyze a, a game or a race in that case. Mm-hmm. And that, that's sort of what we're trying to push because we think in the F1 fandom, there's sort of like either really passionate almost a bit toxic fans and especially after 2021 there's been mm. that a really heavy max clan versus lewis clan and those people just go at each other it, it gets really messy that that's sort of why we're not really on twitter because yeah. this is a minefield and people are people don't really realize that there's someone behind the keyboard that they can hurt mm. people's feelings no it's just attack attack and that it's just like it's just sport, right? So like, yeah. Why? yeah. Why, guys? And then you have people who are like, oh, we are a respectful space. We don't want any trouble. We, and they're not really open about who they support because of it. Because they felt like, oh, if I say I'm a Max fan, then automatically Lewis fans won't feel safe around me. Mm-hmm. And we, we sort of want to sit in the middle because we don't want a toxic space. But we don't want to fake that we're not actively rooting for people like we have our favorites we're really passionate and we don't really understand how you can do sport without rooting for and against someone but it doesn't mean that ultimately you can't just be you know objective and that's where our lack of bias comes i think it it's sort of making fun of the idea that you can be unbiased in sport because you can't you're doing it wrong yeah but it must be so boring if you watch a race and you don't care about who wins like yeah (laughs) <laughs> and uh, that's why everyone's doing. Everyone who's not a Red Bull fan is just watching races, not caring about who wins. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's sort of where our, our it did start is. as a joke it when did. we were originally like, "Oh, we should be unbiased F1 fan," and then just make Red Bull content. <laughs> 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 we don't just make Red Bull. But content. yeah, ultimately, I think it's so important to approach things with you know, an open mind yeah. and um, yeah. we have Lewis fans who follow us and yeah, they haven't all unfollowed us. So 
No, because we're like reasonable. Yeah. And we don't have anything against Lewis. Obviously. No, I like Lewis. Lewis is one of your favorite drivers. For, yeah. for some reason, um, my Mercedes videos, well, the last two I made uh, are, are the best videos I have on my channel. Okay. Um, and um, w when I push out a, a nice McLaren video, um, I, I struggled to get 150 views. <laughs> like last week, I made I made three videos about uh, the upcoming upgrades for Imola. You yeah. know that, that was before I knew that, uh, it was cancelled. Yeah. So I don't want on Ferrari. I don't want on Mercedes, and I don't want on McLaren. The Ferrari one uh, reached about 300. Then the Mercedes one done 1900 and my channel is still very small. So those numbers are good, you know, yeah. and then the McLaren one. Well, like I said, it barely uh, scraped 150 and, you know, I edit it the same way and I, I just got all the information and I spread it all out. It's just, yeah, yeah. some teams are just uh, less clickable, I think. It's so hard to work with algorithms like it's just constantly like why does this video like your comedy clubs right why does one comedy club get like a million a million views and one will get like 200 and something thousand it's like yeah. they're the same well Matt, the same Matt needs guy. to be funnier is what yeah. needs to <laughs> but it's about like who, who he gets shown to yeah so maybe less people are looking for mclaren content lately because because they're they're sad. less engaging because it hurts to be a mclaren fan these days was Mercedes fans are really active because they, they want to hear about the upgrade. Mm. They need hope. So yeah. I guess sort of where White Falls. Um, yeah, I I don't know. It's yeah, it's a mystery game. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not the sort of content creator that is constantly looking to. Um, but I, I, I do still kind of make what I want to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so yeah. if I read three articles about Alpha Tauri, about Nick DeVries and Yuki Tsunoda, then I'll combine them and make a nice video out of that. Yeah, whether it, it scores OK or not, I don't care. And, you know, at some point I'll have my thousand subscribers and my four thousand hours of watch uh, watch time and I'll be monetized. And then what I keep hearing from my YouTube friends is that the algorithm starts spreading you more once you're monetized. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because for some reason YouTube knows then that you're being serious. Mm -hmm. You know that you're there there to stay. So, um, but yeah, the, you know the the search engine is uh, interesting because, like I just said, I made a uh, an Alpha Tauri video about Yuki Tsunoda and um, and Nick DeVries, and then for two weeks he done nothing, and then all of a sudden all these, you know. Rumors came out about you know Nick DeVries being in trouble and uh, you know, Yuki Tsunoda maybe going to Red Bull at some point because Franz Tost had said that he was good enough. Yeah, and I just saw it spiking. Yeah, it's so strange because suddenly people were looking yeah. for all their names and your video showed up. Yeah, it's like yeah. Yeah, don't give up if a video doesn't do well, just leave it. Let it yeah. might it might kick off. Yeah, know? and then yeah, like you know maybe 30, 40 people searched it and watched it. And then the YouTube algorithm said, hey, this video is all, all of a sudden scoring. Let's yeah. see how this group reacts to it. And they just put it yeah. to a new group. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it's uh, it's fascinating, the, the whole um, content creating. And then uh, I focus on YouTube and um, sort of every video I make, I cut into short pieces and put it on uh, TikTok as well. Yeah, because I have it anyway, you know, so it's yeah, a, well, definitely and it's a good way to advertise your account. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I have a video of with 135 K uh, views on my TikTok. Mm -hmm. And in the period that that was booming, um, I didn't see my subscriber count booming on uh, YouTube. So it's yeah. not like people are saying, oh, I'm on TikTok now. I'm going to shut it down and then go to YouTube and type it and type in his name. Yeah, it's, it's a completely different uh, group of people that we watches don't it. Even see our so we'll have like I'd say we've had like three viral videos, three or four, where they've really kicked off, and twice so the Christian video and the most recent one we got lots of subscribers. Mm -hmm. but it hasn't happened every time. Sometimes, like these videos will get like 
hundreds of thousands of views and we'll get like 10 subscribers like 10 followers it's like yeah and so, <laughs> yeah and sometimes you get a video that gives you a thousand subscribers in 48 hours yeah that was and, weird that was I, insane. Don't, I don't understand why this video and it was Daniel my... Ricardo saying that Fernando and Alonso no that's wasn't not it? the one no I mean the comedy club oh yeah yeah and so I don't know why one week people are like, oh, that's a great video. I'm going to watch it, but I don't care about the account. And the next week, there's a thousand people who all collectively decided that it was good enough to follow. And I just think it's also a game of um, repetition. So if people see your type of video come often enough, they'll think, oh, it's actually a thing that this guy does. Maybe I should yeah. check the rest of his content. Mm -hmm. So it's about... Coming. Yeah, that's why on on TikTok the the part one and the part two and the part three videos uh, they score so well because people yeah. like to recognize stuff. Yeah, yeah, like uh, we so we have two series at the moment. Oh, actually, we have your science series yeah, as well. Yeah, but we we're, we're doing series, so we have the um, the not so tricky tracks where Maya talks about the track of the week uh, during race weeks, and she explains sort of like talk about the RS everything. Then um, we have the comedy club where we just compile everything funny that Red Bull's been up to in the race weekend. Uh, I've started a new series where I just pretend I'm the cast talking to each other. And um, we have, then we have funny. just simply science where- uh, If there's no race, and I yeah, want to talk about Yeah, if there's no something. race, Maya just covers a science-y thing. So every time we name them like episode one, episode two, and it sort of like gives people something to, go, to come back for. Because they know that. Okay, more. people, if you think this is interesting, look <laughs> them up on Instagram, unbiased F1 fan. <laughs> What's your main account? Where do you want the most subscribers? Um, honestly, whichever platform people enjoy the most, like we're, yeah. we're equal opportunists with Instagram and TikTok. Yeah, we, we post slightly more videos on TikTok, but we have stories on Instagram, so it kind of bounces. Yeah, and on Instagram, we do uh, quizzes every non-race Sundays, which I work really hard on. So Instagram <laughs> is actually what you want to be at. <laughs> no, it'll come. Because how long have you been doing it for? Since... January, yeah, end so of January, four months. That's it's not so. That, that's not that long. No, it's not. We're pretty, su pretty successful. Yeah, we've been we've been quite lucky that we're able to do things, you know, with our faces in. But yeah. I really enjoy doing edits of the drivers themselves, the interviews, and I think these ones do. I mean, I don't think these ones do the best. Yeah. It, it brings people to our account and then they stay either for those edits or for our little silly videos with us in it. But mm. it allows us to reach more people because it's really hard to get someone to stay and watch your face when yeah. they don't know you. So you sort of have to like attract them for something. Yeah. And then they might stay for your personality. It's well, like, it's like when, when you're on Tinder, you attract them with your pictures and you keep them with your personality. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I um when I was dating uh, there was no Tinder. Ah, back in the days. We, yeah. we actually went to bars and stuff. Oh yeah. We talked to we talked to people in real life. We didn't meet on Tinder. Yeah, we didn't meet on Tinder. <laughs> we met we met outside. Like, like literally yeah. outside. <laughs> <laughs> um I met my wife in a video store. Oh, oh that's lovely. That's cute. Yeah. Did you try and yeah. mansplain her what to watch? <laughs> no, I I phoned her up on a Sunday night. Uh, I phoned up the shop and I said, uh, hi, is Samantha there? And she said, yeah, speaking. So, oh, um, hey, it's uh, Wim, the Dutch guy. And I, I was the only Dutch guy in uh, Northern Ireland at the time. So <laughs> that was kind of silly. I said, hey, you, you want to go for a drink sometime? And she went, uh, no, I don't think my boyfriend would like that. Oh, no. oh. So, oh okay well i i said well is he going to be jealous and she said yeah i said okay well i'll ask him out the next time then <laughs> and she went ha 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 okay bye <laughs> so but uh no it would it it um it all worked out in the end you she know got rid of the boyfriend <laughs> she got rid of the boyfriend yeah. Wow, that's nice. That's a good story. And uh, she actually started following F1 as well now, thanks to me. You know, yeah. she likes crocheting. So when I'm watching a race, you know, <laughs> oh, she's, nice. she's, doing, she's doing crochet. And then I'm like, 
he's going to he's going to pit within 20 uh, laps <laughs> yeah, okay that's great honey <laughs> no, it's, but yeah. she's very supportive it's yeah. one of those sports where you do need a bit of knowledge to really appreciate it it's mm -hmm. not but i think most sports are like that like i i grew up watching tennis like it sort of was my family sport and I, when I met Maya and I sort of like sat her down in front of a tennis game, she was like, you need to explain to me how the point is more. Yeah, Otherwise, I, I don't understand where they go from 15 to 30 to 40 back to zero. Like, if it doesn't I still don't make, understand why. <laughs> I just know that it does. does it, <laughs> if it doesn't make sense to you, you don't really enjoy it because you don't really see the tactic, the strategy. So I, I think you need a bit of interest and knowledge. Yeah. To, yeah. I think it's quite hard to see in F1, the yeah. tactics and things like that. And there is tactics. It's amazing. But you do need the knowledge. And I think, like, having the onboards really helps and things like yeah, that. Yeah, I think... I think we're privileged that we can afford to have access to F1 TV Pro um, or yeah. even like the Sky Sport because being in the car, having access to the radio, like... Yeah, we have Sky Sports on and then we have F1 TV. Yeah, and we can... you have the data channel and the tracker so you know where each car is on the on the circuit at any point and you know who's doing formal sectors you know who's beating who like you can watch it, people chase each other with just, their purple sector yeah it's it's really amazing i think it really enhanced the experience but i'm sure you can absolutely enjoy it by just watching the big screen but i think the sort of subjectivity as to who they choose to show you is a bit of a shame because obviously you can't watch all the overtakes yeah it's not like football and, yeah. um, and if your favorite is not leading the race you might miss out on your favorite team doing anything so i think it's a bit of a shame but what can they do uh, in, unless they split screen in four and go <laughs> midfield yeah. max and whoever is fighting with back you well, know back the pit this this weekend is the first time that um uh, not uh, the local Ma monaco um tv Mm -hmm. uh, broadcaster is doing the broadcast but it's actually um, f1 uh, themselves uh, that are allowed to do to do it so that 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 might make a big change because uh, we all remember two years ago or is it three years ago when uh, Vettel was doing a massive overtake and um, and they showed Lance Stroll. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, that's so funny! It, it, it became a meme. It's hilarious. I mean, it's part of the joy of F1 that it's a bit of a mess, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, but it, it was like the one overtake of the entire yeah, race. Yeah. I think as seven Pierre, or was it? Yeah, I think it was seven Pierre, and they chose to show Lance going over the curb <laughs> as a replay, and it, yeah, bad, bad timing, mm. bad editing. But yeah, I don't. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not not that you not that you say it. I think it might be because it was like the Madagascar TV people. I I always blamed it on that front TV. I just thought, oh, they're just messed no, up. no, they, they weren't directing then. Uh, okay. That's going to be for the first time this year. That makes sense. What did you think of the shots in Baku that went behind the castle? I love the shots. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. They're amazing. I, I love them. And the internet was ripping them apart. I think that was really creative. <laughs> that was brilliant. Or like the, they had like an undershot with the the flags in the background and just the cars racing between like the flag and the... Yeah. Very nice. Sometimes they do these little, little goofy things like um, they do a pit stop and then they flip the camera. Yeah. yeah. You know, they, they let the camera roll. Yeah. Um, it's it's nice. fun. Um, I think that I started noticing these things more now that I'm um, making my own videos. Yeah, yeah. I think they'll 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 have a hard time beating this um, this lab that Charles did in Austin last year with like the the sun setting and him appearing like above the hill and it was just such a nice shot. It's just beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I one of my uh, Twitter moods uh, done. Um, I, you're not on Twitter, are you? You yeah, are? Uh, we are unbiased or we are on there, but um, we don't really post, we just stalk. No, it. yeah, we're on there for well, anymore, but well, I sort well, of deal with the music. Uh, was it from Top Gun? Or, yeah, yeah, she, yeah. she put like this really classic 80s uh soundtrack on it, and it it just it just makes it, it went it. viral. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love, I love how music changes the time. Yeah, well. so Maya, you have a technical background. Ten, kind of. <laughs> well, that, didn't you tell me that, that you, you, you know, you, you, um, yeah, yeah, so you're I'm very interested in, in, in the technical side of it? 
Yeah, so I'm technically, I'm like a biologist by... Oh, biologist. Uh, well, a biochemist. Um, so like, obviously my mind works in like technical ways. So it's been a really nice opportunity to like get back into physics and trying to understand how everything works. Um, and I've been working with like some education projects, um, like writing some lessons for kids, yeah, so for school kids on like how different F1 components work and things like that. Um, which has been convenient for when I'm making my videos. Like my radio one, I'm writing that into a lesson. <laughs> So, yeah. But, uh, you know, especially after the Spain uh, Grand Prix, um, you know, you're going to you're going to fill your boots with all the information that has come out and which teams have uh, had successful upgrades and which teams had um, bad uh, upgrades. Uh, like, what are your ex what are your expectations? Oh, my God. So <laughs> I don't feel like. So I was listening to Adrian Newey's podcast earlier. Have you listened to it yet? It just came out. Well, while I was waiting on you two, I, I just put it on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it was interesting what he was saying, like, you know, they're not being complacent. Every other team is going to make progress and things like that. But I'm really interested to see the Mercedes. Like, yeah, I've everybody just, is. Yeah, just I, I want to see what they've done, like whether they've like swallowed their pride a bit and changed their tact or whether it's going to look like the same car. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I feel like if they've, I don't know, I don't, if they show up with side pods, it's going to be like wild. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like what did you do? <laughs> we were robbed uh, by not having Imola because Monaco is not going to be the race where they showcase no. The upgrade. no. So we have to wait one more week. Yeah. And it feels like we've just had street circuits forever. It's been Bahrain and then just street yeah. circuits. So I'm just desperate to see. And then there's going to be a long stretch of none. No street circuit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because like uh, the European Singapore season is. Um, Mexico, but yeah. So. Is, um, um, but yeah, no. I'm, I'm not sure. Like McLaren, I don't know. Like what are we going to get from them? What can they do? <laughs> Well, that, Maybe you know, they'll finally in, have a finished car. <laughs> in 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 the in the video I made, uh, you know, I I I said the only way is up. Yeah. You know, I I ended on on a positive note, and um, it is. You know, hopefully, it, yeah, it can't be worse. But their car's really draggy, um, McLarens. So if they can solve yeah. their drag problem, it's not that bad. So that'll be interesting. Um, I'd like to see what Ferrari can do with straight line speed. Genuinely, because a lot in a lot of parts of the track, Charles is faster than Max, right? Like any, yeah. and, and when they when they're going slowly, so if Ferrari sort their straight line speed out, try and figure out what Rebels doing with the DRS, which is like magic. Um, well, that, that would be amazing. Uh, all my preseason uh, predictions, I had uh, Ferrari as number two because you know they were so good last year, yeah. and then they sort of dropped off because of the TD that was brought in. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, they need to fix strategy. That's pretty easy. Then um, uh, Leclerc and Saints need to get a little bit less accidents. You know, the Saints needs to be in the gravel yeah. a little bit less. And uh, Leclerc needs to keep it on track a little bit more. You know, that, that's 60 points uh, one. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, improve the car. You know, that yeah. it's, you know, just as fast and a little bit more stable. And then it turned out that, so far that they've been worse than um than last season which is yeah it's a shame a bit disappointing but yeah. you know i i still think they can get there and especially with these long seasons yeah you know, mm -hmm. if if they if if they start winning races from now on and podiums and you mm -hmm. know they start climbing up those first five races will be forgotten like that yeah you know and i'm not sure whether maybe the car feels like they don't trust it like I don't like there's this, this sudden drop in performance not sudden but like, there's a bit of a drop in performance and it's like maybe because right, yeah. you could really tell in it was in Bappy right when Max was like I don't trust the car yeah you can really it's tell the difference the when they don't feel comfortable they don't feel completely safe and things like that so maybe it's that no uh, both the uh, Ferrari drivers have said in interviews that the car goes from oversteer into inter um 
understeer in one corner. Yeah, and it's so, so <laughs> it, it's it's actually amazing that 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 Charles Leclerc can put it on pole in the first place uh, in some races. Yeah, and I, I so think, good. I like, think Charles is really pushing it this uh, this year, and that's why he's had. Um, I mean, he hasn't had that many crashes, but like for example, the in Miami, like he. Once he put in the wall, and then in quality he put in the wall again. Actually, but I think it's because he's taking risks with a with a car that is not a hundred percent his. Like he's mm. not feeling completely in control of it, but he's still pushing because he's desperate to be in the fight. He's desperate for points, and and like yeah. Yeah, I respect it, and that. yeah, I respect it. And he managed to put it on pole, which mm-hmm. you know Charles is amazing in quality and with the fourth best car he still managed to get is like the only driver who got Paul who's not a rebel driver so I think you know the drivers are still there yeah the drivers are clearly not the issue yeah. this year yeah it's the car I mean I don't think well I don't know year, like but Charles he's Charles, the one who put it in the wall yeah, but right Char- Charles is a risk taker <laughs> yeah and you know if if he could like win it without any risk he probably would because mm. he learned from France last year when he didn't need to take risks and he did put it in the wall, mm. sadly. Yeah. yeah. And the Mercedes, let's see. Let's see. Well, <laughs> you see, the thing with Mercedes, yes, and, and I, in my predictions, I I have them in P3 because I didn't count um, Austin Martin to be this good. I know, right? <laughs> um, but, yeah. you know, uh, the, the years of dominance were because of uh, a really, really strong engine. Mm-hmm. And that strong engine, that sort of, if they made a season with a um, a lesser chassis at the start of the season, that engine could pull them out anyway. You know, they yeah. could pull it to 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 win. Um, in 2021, the benefit of that engine was gone because the Honda engine, yeah, was just as strong. Yeah. Then there was this re- regulation change because. Um, Pirelli couldn't introduce their new tires because of COVID. Mm. Um, and they were afraid that um, the cars had too much downforce for the tires they were using. So they needed to cut out a bit of the floor mm-hmm. to take away some of the downforce. Yeah. And then everybody expected um, Mercedes with their low rake to benefit from it. And then it turned out to be the other way around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, cars with high rake, so Alpha Tauri and uh, and Red Bull, they benefited. Mm-hmm. And Mercedes, uh, they were actually slower. And then it took them a long, long, long time to fix that. Mm-hmm. You know, it took yeah, them like they've been quite stubborn in a way. Like yeah. it's almost the Abu, it's almost the Abu Dhabi effect, right? They're like, oh my god, these guys are built a better car than us. We can't. We have to do it differently than them. We can't. We can't copy them. Like Aston Martin, they copied them. Like fair game. Yeah, so you're right. there's a bit of pride in there. Yeah. That's like a former cities of Ferrari. It's a because, copy red yeah, Bull. because Ooh. of like their powers, because of who they are. It's like, oh, we're not gonna just copy them to be as but good. I, no, we're gonna beat them by doing something different. I saw Martin, they have no pride. They don't care. They copied Mercedes <laughs> no. like when they were for India and now they're copying Red Bull. It's like they're right. <laughs> They're doing it right, ultimately. Like. Yeah, and then, you know, Dan follows. Uh, he, he ran the Red Bull team when um, exactly. when Adrian knew he was building boats instead of cars because uh, for a while he wasn't so interested in F1. And Dan follows. He, he ran the whole program. I think he was very much involved in the 2021 car, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's so it's not like why why would you not copy the the car yeah, the who's currently on top? I mean I know why, because if everyone had access to all the info, but you know, I th- I think they're doing they're doing the right thing because Yeah, it's not works. like that rebel's gonna get any slower. It's not like the aerodynamics of that rebel is not gonna work. Mm-hmm. Like even if the engines change or whatever they do in ten years' time. But like Aerodynamics is aerodynamics. The air isn't going to change, no. so <laughs> you got to get on board. <laughs> like, no, and that's one thing that uh, Aston Martin did really well last year. They started really poor. I think they were the ninth uh, ninth team on the grid, mm-hmm. and then I think in race four or five, they dumped the the concept with no with small side pods, and they came out with um, the um, green Red Bull. 
Yeah, I remember that, like, the all of the Sky commentators being really close to the Aston Martin, like, where did these come from? <laughs> <laughs> Is this allowed? Like, <laughs> yeah. No, but it, it, so it's good for them. I think, though, that the battle for P2 is going to be really close. Yeah. Because Lonstraw is not as high as he should be. Like, I, I feel like if the Mercedes gets better, they have two drivers that are, like, fighting each other. Yeah. I, I'm not saying that Lonstro is not good. I'm just saying that he's not fighting Alonso yeah. at, for position at all. They're not fighting for the same position. Lonz hasn't been close to a podium yet, whereas you would expect Aston Martin to be fighting for P3. Mm. So I think if Mercedes or even Ferrari, because both teams have like sort of more even drivers, sort of like make a step up, then Aston Martin will have to really pull on for him to really be on Alonso's level for Aston Martin to like keep that P2 because otherwise the other two are gonna climb up. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But what I think is gonna happen is that um, um, Red Bull's gonna pull a gap that's big enough, you know, till the summer break. And then um, they're just gonna stop developing and they're gonna work on the 2024 car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um, then you'll see the last eight, nine races that other teams will start winning uh, as well. Mm. And the fights will be much more exciting. Um, you know, Aston Martin has a lot of wind tunnel time because they finished P7 last season. Yeah, that's exciting. But then I was thinking, and, you know, I've been asking around uh, to the experts on uh, Twitter. Mm. But, um, you know, the time in the wind tunnel... Yeah, the staff that's doing that, they need to get paid. Mm-hmm. And then the information that comes out of that, all the data that needs to be processed. Yeah. And that's costing wages. You know, that's costing money as well. And that's money Red Bull is saving. And a team like uh, Austin Martin, they, they need to spend that money to get yeah. all that data done. So yeah. do you think that's a downside of having more wind tunnel CFD time? And would yeah, you say I, I Red Bull I'm is having a sort of an upside of not having to do that financially? Yeah, we inter- I mean, we'll never see the balance of where they spent their money, but I guess Red Bull's going to have to spend wages on mathematicians and like people who can do computer modeling and someone's got to do that modeling without the wind tunnel. I mean, I'm sure, like... Uh-huh. Because they're not as expensive as, like, running a wind tunnel. But... You, you know what amount of wind tunnel you're going to have as soon as, you know, your position on the previous season is locked, right? So I think that's something that they must factor in their budget really early on. Uh, I don't think it's something What's that's What's the difference going in time? To, I, I, don't I don't have know. the exact numbers, but... Whether it's actually that big or not? Well, it is quite big, and also because Red Bull have even got less penalty. because they got yeah. like a fine. So, yeah, Red Bull's got sixty three percent, and I think the fifth team, you know, in the middle of the standings, they they get a hundred percent. Okay, I think it's something like that, and then the sixth team gets one hundred and ten percent, and then the seventh team gets one hundred and twenty percent. So they get a hundred percent, and then they get extra added uh, time yeah. to develop. Okay. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that works and yeah, whether Adrian Newey can just do it all in his head. Doesn't I'm, need I'm expecting <laughs> I'm expecting a big uh, um budget cap row part two as well. Aston Martin. What are they doing? Well so Martin last year, <laughs> um, they were with Red Bull, they were one of the two teams that okay, were investigated. investigated. So they have to be careful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll see. That I think the fight for P2 is going to be exciting. Hopefully the fight for P1, but right now. But it's only been five races. I don't know, have, that's so far ahead. We have 17 to yeah, go. Yeah, that's true. And I'm not wrong when I say that there's been no Red Bull DNF, which means... Yeah, as soon as they start know. DNFing, which will happen. Well, it, maybe, it's bound okay, to happen. Maybe you, Sergio will crash. No, it's, it's, <laughs> bound, it's bound to happen. Like, Yeah, it is. Mechanical failure or something. Yeah, they were were talking about the brakes aren't great. Something that, you know, like last year, a lot of cars DNF, or even this year, Charles DNF in Melbourne because Lonstraw hit him. It's Mm. not even your fault. It's like, no. It happens. So, or like Max has had two bad quality out of five. Yeah. And starting in the midfield means you're 
you're in danger. <laughs> you're in danger because there's so many cars. So anything can happen. Like I'm 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 impressed that they all managed to finish Miami, to be honest. And that they didn't crash in Baku. Like Nick was the only DNF. Mm. I think he DNF. Yeah. Was he the only DNF? No, I think when you Joe also Joe Guanyu also DNF. But yeah. it was not it was not crash. It was like uh mechanical or just they hit the wall on their own. It's not like cars causing DNF. So it's been quite clean. Yeah, it has. In the past two I races. say that. When Monaco's coming. <laughs> so Yeah, who's gonna crash in Monaco? I I feel bad predicting. I it. mean a rook, uh, probably a rookie. I think the Lo- Logan Sargent. Oh Logan. <laughs> I think I bless him. I think it's really hard to predict who's gonna I feel like maybe Nick will be more has do they do has he driven in Monaco? I don't think so because I don't know if F2, he's just I don't think F2 F2's done wasn't. Monaco before and if he did Monaco no, okay. this year. I, I feel like Nick is old enough that he will just go a bit slower. <laughs> I think he'd probably rather just finish it. To be honest, I, I could see a Ferrari lose it just because, like we discussed before, mm. they're pushing it really hard and they don't really trust the car and yeah. they want it so bad. Like, Carlos has had two P2s, he needs a third P2, and Charles has a lot to do yeah. at that track. Uh, I just so... I worry for Charles at Monaco. I want, I want him to do to do well. Yeah. So who do you think is going to win? Let's do some predictions. Well, Max is going to win. <laughs> Max is going to win, okay. Oh, hold on. Wait, king of the street, Sergio. <laughs> well, I mean... But you can't overtake it. So whoever's going to be on pole is going to win. I mean, no, let's... let's yeah, okay. Like, let's okay. Charles do, you know, do you know, actually, the in the last, say, six, seven years, um, you know, um, uh, four times it was the pole setter and four times it wasn't? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually looking at it um this morning that uh so last year Charles was on pole and Checo won the year before yeah. Charles was on pole, but he didn't start, so mm-hmm. Max won. Um the year before they didn't do it, the year before Lewis won it and he was on pole, but the year before Daniel won it from pole, but then I think Seb wasn't on pole in two thousand seventeen and then two thousand sixteen we don't talk about it. Daniel was on pole, the tires weren't ready, so Lewis won yeah. P three. So yeah, it's it's a false like Yeah. It's a false curse. Um, well, I, I sounded so knowledgeable. I just looked it up today. <laughs> That's the only reason why I know. Uh, but well yeah, I think um, I think we'll see. And the rain is going to matter a lot. So mm. I. Who do you think is going to win? To be honest, I don't. I think it's going to be a Red Bull, but I want a first-time Monaco winner. So yeah. Even though I'm a Red Bull fan, I don't need Red Bull to win this one because I think I'd love Charles to win. Yeah. I, Charles would be my first choice if I could pick. Yeah. Alonso seemed really confident about Monaco. Yeah. I don't know why. But <laughs> he knows something. <laughs> yeah, that man knows something. So, yeah. He's gonna get that car set up just for Monaco. Uh, the Monaco setup. <laughs> and um yeah, for I want to first have Monaco winner. So give it to Charles Carlos, Oh, George. George. Well oh, today I saw a video from uh, Peter Brooks about, um, do you know Peter Brooks? It rings a bell, mm, who is it? Who is he? Yeah, he's an English fella and he does these really long documentary style. Um, okay. Oh, okay. Is um, he the type of person that would know his voice but not his face? Yeah, you don't yeah. know his face. Okay. okay. <laughs> Next month when he's on my podcast, you'll know his face. Okay, cool. But, um, no, uh, he he done a video about uh, Charles Leclerc and uh, Monaco, and even in F two, um, he um, he didn't finish. Just and like then um, when he was driving for Sauber, he had an accident, and then um, I, hope I hope he's talking. Yeah. To l- last year, last year he even crashed uh, one of these classic um, Ferrari cars. Um, um, yeah, but then la- last year he started on pole, and because of a uh, bad uh, uh, Ferrari strategy. He finished P4, but you know him finishing. Yeah, was first. was progress. Yeah, exactly. so, so I think this year is going to be podium, and next yes. year is going to be. Win. I think he's. Just I think Max going to win, and then P2 is going to be Charles Leclerc, and P3 is always for Alonso. You yeah, Alonso is going to be P3 the rest of the season, every race. 
That would be a nice podium. <laughs> I think it's going to be Max, Alonso, Charles. Yeah, I want Charles to be P3 because P2 he will not enjoy. If he gets P2, he will be beating himself up for not getting P1. Uh, Whereas yeah. P2 is like, oh my God, I did it. I got a podium. So I don't know who I'm putting on P2. Probably Checo. Let's be, let's be real. Um, yeah. Why are we predicting against Rebel? Just another one too. Yeah. Like, it, see, look at our face. Even we are tired of it. <laughs> <laughs> so just give us something else. Yeah. Or just make us believe it's not going to happen. Podium, you know? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Well, see, I I I am biased, you know. Um, Max is the first um, Dutch F1 winner, mm-hmm. race winner. Um, yeah, and then first world champion. I just want to, you know, I want to ride this thing. Yeah. And oh yeah. I'll, I'll be unbiased as soon as he's retired in two in 2028. Yeah. You know, <laughs> then I'll be gonna, unbiased. Never see or hear from him again. <laughs> I, uh, I... But until then, it's Max all the way. I don't know, can you see the corner there? All the posters? Yeah, yes. we saw it. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. Uh, I'm really unbiased like six days a week, no, five days a week. But then when Quali comes around and Max is not P1, I get really irritated. So yeah. I just need to, I just need him to do well. But I, I, I buy merch from all teams. Yeah. So okay. I'll, I'll go Ferrari, Aston Martin. Yes. It's nice. Mercedes. Mercedes. Oh, I like it. <laughs> this one's got this one I'm gonna burn. No. No, just kidding. I can't do that. <laughs> this like, you forgot about that, but somebody uh, thing, uh, some people did. I know people yeah. did it, but yeah. <laughs> we only have Rebel Cows. <laughs> no, we have hey. uh, Oh we have a McLaren one. But. are you going to races at all? Yeah, yeah. we're going to Silverstone. Oh cool. Well, it's going to be a uh, fun, weird, not great as a Max fan, I don't think. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah Silverstone's going to be good because we get to see all the series. So, like, they've got F2 and F3 and there'll probably be some, like, classic car stuff going on and should be fun. Porsche. Porsche will be there, yeah. So, should be good. I went to uh, the Dutch Grand Prix last year and it was so good. Yeah. And, yeah, I really loved it. And I'm a bit scared that the vibe at Silverstone is going to be completely different mm-hmm. because I'm going to go from the Orange Army at home to to Lewis's house to Lewis, George and Lando's <laughs> house. It is literally their house. Lewis literally owns Silverstone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's going to be very different. I don't expect to enjoy it as much because uh, the Brits have that really bad habit of booing Max. Even mm. when we just watch the race in a, in a bar, people are booing Max and I'm like, he can't hear you. Like it's not football, guys. <laughs> We so, I hope people are going to behave in Silverstone because in Zenvold the vibe was really friendly and fun. So I really enjoyed it. Are you going to one? Yeah, yeah well, um, I just got tickets. You know, uh, Max is sponsored by uh, by Jumbo, big supermarket chain here in uh, in Holland. Yeah. And um, you, you had to hand in, um, you know, the, uh, your, your dockets and then you could get 50% off on tickets for the Friday. Okay. So, oh, so nice. I'm going. I'm, I'm going to the um, the sprint quali. That's no. Fun. It's it's actually the normal quali because it's a sprint weekend. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Cool. So I'll be there on the Friday, and I'm going to Austria the whole weekend. Okay. Nice. That's cool. So That's cool. I'm. That will be cool. I'm stepping on a bus. <laughs> you know, uh, like five minutes from my home. Okay. And then it's probably a 15, 16 hour drive. You know. Okay. Because first we have to go to all these places in Holland to pick people up. <laughs> yeah. And then it's all the way through Germany and then to, okay. yeah, then to Austria. But uh, yeah, that, that's going to be all the three days as well. And that's a sprint weekend as well. So oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's so the, the funny thing is at home, I'm thinking, ugh, sprint weekend. Why did I have to change it? And then, hey, I'm going to Austria. Oh, it's a sprint weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's something happening. So yeah. I think on the for the people on the track, the sprint weekends are better. Yeah. I mean, I enjoy I mean, them from home. Yeah, so. I love them. I love a sprint weekend. Yeah. They're good. Because it's short, right? Like, it doesn't doesn't take over your whole day. Like, on a Sunday, on a Grand Prix weekend, that's it. That's your day. There's <laughs> more things to cover. Yeah. Whereas sprint weekends, like, a manageable size. Um, but, yeah, I really like the sprints and, like, F2 and stuff as well. I think mm-hmm. it's good. 
Yeah, just that. And there's a FE soon as well. Yes. Yeah, we're going to the Formula E in London as well. Okay. Um, because they do like quali and everything on one day, so we're just going for one day, and it's it's much more convenient because it's like really super close, close to us. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, that's gonna be fun and a little bit more low key. Um, but FE is really good this year, so it'll be fun. Mm-hmm. I never got into that, but then, you know, I'm I'm very careful to to start watching other um kinds of racing because uh, I do get obsessed with things, you know. So. <laughs> I'm staying away from um, from IndyCar yeah. and uh, you know all the other good yeah. stuff. You know, I, I on Twitter I see a lot of people who are completely hooked on um, on MotoGP. Yeah, you know, oh, it's so scary MotoGP. That, that there's there's some characters in there, and I think I could totally vibe on it, but I, I'm not going to do it because I'll I'll not have time for anything else. You know, so I'm just you know laser focused on F1 and my YouTube channel, and I'll just keep keep focused on that. Yeah, it's a good um, it's a yeah. good tactic, but we failed. <laughs> it's fine because it's our thing, right? It's good for a relationship. Yeah, there's always something to watch. It's good. We tried indie a bit, but it's always on quite late, so it's difficult to like you know also like be researching the rules and trying to understand what's going on. But the actual racing in indie was really good. Mm-hmm. Once yeah. you get going, lots of overtakes. Yeah. And different winners, like, every time. Yeah, it's That's cool. cool. And it's very Americanized, like, we're into the NFL, so we kind of get, like, cool vibes of, like, when they're doing the trap walk and it's all just so Americanized. It's, like, ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the accents are so thick. Yeah. Yeah. They're fun. It's cool. Okay. Right. Well, do you have a wild prediction for this season? For the season? I said last week that I think Alonso's going to win Monza. That's my okay. prediction. It's really specific. It's very specific. Uh, my word prediction is that Danny Rick is going to be back on the grid. Before Silverstone. No, that's not. <laughs> no. no, it's not possible. <laughs> They're great for us. Not, not but you're doing yet. two predictions now. Alonso's going to win and Danny Rick is going to... Uh, yeah, that's my two uh, word prediction. In like a random car. In like an Alphine. Oh no, it's not no, going to he, he, He's going to have a contract before the end of the year yeah yeah he's I not going so. to steal anyone's car before the end of the season no. because he wants a break yes um yeah. i think that i would love for like alpine i'm not, i'm really into alpine this season i want alpine to be like part of like a p3 battle you want to the constructors race. Put them on P1 on the podium. Not on P1, but I feel like they're going to uh, somehow come back. So Just like you, you, really push you think each other. They're going to do some upgrades and they're, they're going to be um, best of the rest of, for the rest of the yeah, season? Yeah, they're just going like, to really annoy Ferrari and Mercedes. Just yeah. <laughs> I just want like that drama. No, that's fair. Yeah. The annoying friend. Yeah, and they, because I expect them to be quite evenly matched, I think it would work quite well. Mm-hmm. I've just, yeah. Where did they come from? Why are they here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I just thought of my prediction. Yeah. You know how uh, Lewis Hamilton is is ahead in the standings of George Russell. Yeah. Um. I think George Russell at some point is gonna find his groove. Mm-hmm. And then he starts being Mister Consistent. And he's going to consistently beat Lewis Hamilton. And he's going to finish above him in the standings again. Yeah, I agree. I that's, think so. that's, that's, that's my wild prediction. Yeah, I think Lewis needs to. I don't know what he needs. I he's think, just, and that's just not, it feels like it's not his car. I think Lewis is a bit like Mercedes in the type that is not as willing to be flexible mm-hmm. and to adapt. Like we said, Mercedes don't want to copy Red Bull almost out of principle. Mm. Lewis doesn't want to sort of like change and adapt because he's been doing this for so long. Whereas mm. George is like, I, I was in Williams like two days ago. Like I'll drive anything, just give me anything. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that little time to adapt might be a bit quicker with George just because he's, mm. and also he's younger. He's like hungry for it. It's not, his pride hasn't been hurt. But so so far, I, I think Lewis has been better in the races. Those those five races, I think um, yeah, he had quicker pace overall. Yeah, 
But uh, yeah, I think uh, yeah. George Russell's is gonna, like I said earlier, he's he's gonna find his groove, and then he's gonna he's, then he's gonna start beating him in the in the races, George and then. Uh, really hungry for it. George had such a great start to the season last year, yeah. where he, he was consistently in the top five up until mm. Silverstone. I think was it Silverstone? Uh-huh. I think that was his first DNF. But um, the difference between him and now is uh, sixteen points. But then George uh-huh. Russell had um, an engine exploding on him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh my you god, know, that's he so had scary. he had a. Pro- a Proper you DNF. Yeah, you're like George, get out of your car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true, like, yeah, but it shows also like when you're not fighting at the top. I mean, when you're fighting at the top too, but when you're in the midfield and you're just gaining three, four mm-hmm. points here and there, a DNF can change a lot. Yeah. Because it's like, oh no, you, you really need those two, three points consistently because then if you get a DNF and your teammate is P4, then whoop, that's yeah. why it's we're, embarrassing. Talk, we're talking like 12 points. And so suddenly it's just like, it changes everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I think we're at the end of the podcast. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> Thank you. It's been fun. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's been fun. It went really quick. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. It's we over an to- hour. I'll, I'll edit a bit off here and there, but... um. We didn't yeah, it was lovely to uh, talk about Lewis going to Ferrari again, <laughs> like the rumor <laughs> that keeps on coming back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Every year it comes out and it never happens. Yeah, no, he's not going. No. Uh, I I will not make any statement. You know what? And so I think to... I don't think Lewis would go to a team that's that's so Italian. I think he's like his fan base and his. A lot of the money he has and things like that come from his like British Germanism. Um, like well, he's almost a brand. Yeah. Like okay. so, I feel like if he leaves Mercedes and then he retires two years later, has he lost that fan base? Is that going to be a problem? Mm. Anyway, if I was his manager, I wouldn't tell, <laughs> wouldn't tell him to go to Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Lewis is not going to Ferrari. Those were the final thoughts of the unbiased F1 fan. Uh, follow them on all the social media outlets. Um, and um, I'll see you in the next time. Bye bye.